Hey guys, this is Nick with Nick Does DJI, and welcome to my channel, where I cover all things personal finance, stocks, and real estate. Today, I want to go over a monthly dividend paying stock I'll be buying more of in 2021. So let's get into it. We are here to talk about ticker symbol O, Realty Income. This is my favorite monthly dividend paying stock with a proven 25 year history of dividend growth. And I can't wait to discuss this company with you guys today. The, the stock trades for around $61 as of this recording and has a dividend yield of 4.62% and pays out $2.81 a year or just over 23 cents a month. Realty Income is a real estate investment trust or REIT. By nature, REITs do not pay corporate taxes as long as it pays out over 90% of its taxable income to shareholders. And Realty Income is in the business of acquiring and managing freestanding commercial properties, generating rental revenue under long-term net lease agreements. Realty Income may not be a high-flying IPO or growth stock, but this is a company I am very fond of. I absolutely love dividends, real estate, and passive income, and Realty Income fits the bill of all three. The company has dubbed itself as the monthly dividend company having paid out a total of 605 consecutive dividends paid with 93 consecutive quarterly increases and i love realty income because i have a background in commercial real estate investing location and tenant quality makes all the difference in commercial real estate the company has over 6,500 real estate properties across 51 different industries and in 49 states puerto rico and the uk And let me tell you, properties under the Realty Income portfolio are top-notch quality tenants. Let's take a look at their top 20 tenants. And you can see that many of themselves are credit-worthy companies like Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, FedEx, and more. But if you're looking down the list and are wondering how the illness has impacted Realty Income's rent collection because of shuttered tenants like LA Fitness, Regal Cinemas, and AMC Theaters, I wouldn't be too concerned. During its Q2 report, Realty Income announced that its portfolio occupancy rate was 98.5% and its actual rent collection was 84.9% in May, at the height of all the lockdowns and economic uncertainty. However, in its later, latest Q3 report, the company announced a slightly higher portfolio occupancy rate at 98.6%, and a much improved contractual rent collection at 93.1% in September. So it seems as though Realty Income has already recovered from its rent collection low in April. If we take a further look at the rent collection broken down by specific industries, you can see that by September, only health and fitness and theaters were the only two segments dragging down the company's overall rent collection percentage. And these two industries make up about 13% of the company's total rental income and each are not a particularly large industry segment for the company. Then as this country roll, continues to roll out its mass vaccination efforts, I have no doubt that the company's tenants, particularly the gyms and the movie theaters, will be able to reopen all of their doors for business and in turn con continue paying contractual rent. Realty Income is in the business of long-term triple net leases. We can't go over a real estate company without going over the lease structure. And what is a triple net lease? You can think of it as the most advantageous lease structure for a property owner, period. For reference, for example, if a single family home investment property owner receives rent from his or her tenant, the owner is still liable from the property's operating expenses, including property taxes, property insurance, and maintenance. However, in a triple net lease arrangement, the tenant pays for all of those expenses on top of their base rent. And whereas residential leases are shorter term, think a year or two, commercial triple net leases tend to be longer term. For example, when acquiring new properties, Realty Income tries to lock in 10 to 20 year initial lease agreements. And according to the company's Q3 report, the company's weighted average remaining lease term is approximately nine years. A benefit to having longer lease terms provides REITs like Realty Income stability and predictability. 
and in many cases, there are yearly rent increases baked into the lease, usually tied to the Consumer Price Index or CPI, as well as several three to five year option periods that the tenant can exercise after the initial lease term. In other words, long boring leases are a positive indication that revenues and dividends will grow year after year. There is truly no better feeling than driving by a corner occupied by a Walgreens or CVS and knowing that you own a sliver of that property. Investing in real estate is the ultimate way to passively invest in real estate. I get to own commercial properties without the headaches of physically managing the properties and any issues that might arise from it. With Realty Inca, you have the management team with a ton of professional real estate experience doing the grunt work for you. True story, but there has been more than a few instances of getting calls from the police or tenant saying that the, that someone has smashed the front window with a brick or that a water pipe has bursted overnight. Yes, owning real estate is passive 95% of the time, but that small 5% of active work can be a real stressful pain in the butt. And there is a high barrier to entry into prime commercial real estate. Take this California gas station for sale for $6 million or this bank property in Massachusetts for $7.25 million and or this auto retail store up in Washington for $3.8 million. And let's face it, commercial real estate investing is out of reach for most people. Owning a piece of realty income via REITs and the stock market gives me that exposure and diversification. And anyone just starting off with investing can buy one share and build their position over time. Critics often knock on dividend paying stocks and REITs for high dividend yields and market underperformance. And that is usually the case for many companies, but not guilty income because of its top notch management and the nature of the triple net business. The stock has actually overperformed Dow Jones, S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Going back 1994, Realty Income has a compounded average annual total return of 15.3%. And did I mention that Realty Income is a monthly dividend paying and dividend growth company? In just 2020 alone, Realty Income has already increased its dividend a total of four times. And just look at this company's dividend growth and payout history since 1994. There's simply no other company to count on for reliable monthly dividends. Before we head into the Nick Does DJI portfolio, I just want to take a quick look at the company's financials to ensure that the dividends are well covered by the rental revenues. Or rather than looking at revenues or earnings like most companies, we will look at AFFO or Adjusted Funds for Operation, a term used to evaluate REITs like Realty Income with certain tax treatment like depreciation, amortized reoccurring expenditures, and etc. regarding real estate. The earnings per share EPS metric can be thrown off year to year, so it is better to look at AFFO, which takes into account these of these various events to me better measure the cash flow from operations. And over the past 10 years, you can see that the AFFO per share has steadily risen from $1.86 in 2010 to $3.32 in 2019. And in the same period, dividend per share has gone up from $1.72 in 2010 to $2.72 in 2019. A quick calculation shows that the dividend payout ratio is roughly at 81.97%, calculated by dividing the dividend per share by the AFFO. And as long as the AFFO can grow 4 to 5% annually, the dividend can safely be increased each year. And since starting my Nick Does DGI portfolio at the end of September, I have been paid out three times by Realty Income, 31 cents in October, 41 cents in November, and 80 cents in December. And as my portfolio continues to grow, I will continue to accumulate more shares of this company. I now hold over 5.6 shares and I am expected to receive over $1.33 in January. I would love to eventually grow my position to a point where I will earn over $1,000 a month in passive dividend income just from Realty Income. 
and I expect this company to remain an integral holding in the Nick Does DGI portfolio for years to come. Please note that this video is not intended as financial advice, nor am I a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence when choosing to invest in individual stocks. If you found this content useful, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing to my channel. This helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps get my channel noticed. Hit the bell notification to receive the latest alerts as to when the next video will drop. Bye.